Welcome to Lawline with your host, Alan Storman. Mr. Storman is a distinguished trial attorney, author, and lecturer. Each week, Lawline will bring you the most knowledgeable experts in the field of law today. And now, we introduce our guests and our host, Alan Storman. Welcome to Lawline. By all accounts, electronic learning is experiencing unprecedented growth, becoming a multi-billion dollar industry. Today we'll look at the future of e-learning and what effect it'll have on our future education. Our guests are David Liu, COO of Newton, and David Schnorman, our resident business and technology expert. Hello, Davids. Hi. David Liu, let me ask you first, what does Newton do? We are an online uh, education platform. We've developed an adaptive learning technology uh, that really enables and empowers anyone to be able to learn more efficiently and more effectively from anywhere uh, in the world. We launched uh, two and a half years ago a suite of test pet products. Those are our beta products that have uh, that leverage the adaptive learning technology, and we've done quite well. They're quite disruptive. Okay, let's let's talk it at least in in a level that the viewer can perhaps <laughs> sure. understand a little more, if I if I may. What does it mean to me? Does that mean I don't have to go to school anymore? I can go to your website? That would be great, <laughs> but no, that's not the case. We, in, in, in really simple terms, um, our technology allows us to be able to, to understand what everyone's doing. Uh, we data mine those elements of, of your behavior online when you're taking a course. Um, so not only do we have your educational experience and what you've done, but we're, we're able to then be able to serve up the right content for you at the right time um, so that you're able to capture that and, and, and really uh, master the content okay. much, much better. So let's see if I understand. It's interactive. Absolutely. As in I am time. taking the course, depending on the answers that I'm giving, there will be questions coming that are geared to me personally. Not only questions, content, uh, whether it be static, video, uh, what time of day we give it to you all down to the at the atomic level. We really break it down to its elements so that no one person, no two people will have the same learning experience. It's really truly personalized to your, uh, to the individual. Okay, Dave, how do you see the future of e-learning? Where are we going? Well, right now, you know, we provide continuing education online for, you know, all the attorneys in the country. That's lawline.com. Lawline, and what we've been doing traditionally is uh, online streaming courses. You know, you go to your computer, you watch it on your computer, and then you, complete your evaluation form and you get, you get uh, credit for it. Uh, what we just developed and clearly what is the future for learning in my opinion is an uh, iPad and iPhone application so you can take a course wherever you want. Um, and just from my own personal experience when I'm sitting on my couch or on my commute to, to work it's such a more I can think and concentrate versus sitting at my desk where I'm supposed to be doing work and having to stare at my computer screen for hours on end. I think it's um, where future is what the iPad is meant for, and I'm really excited for all the other opportunities that are going to be there for people to learn. David, where do you see the future of learning? We see it as an incredibly personalized experience. Uh, we are in a crisis. Uh, there's an educational crisis in this country, uh, around the world. Uh, I think right now 80% of the world's population doesn't get a proper education. In the United States, we have a third of our uh, high school students failing out of high school. A third of call uh, college students are in some sort of remediation uh, class, and so uh, the system isn't working. Where I see the future of, of education going is that we're going to be able to provide um, not only Newton, but companies uh, you'll be seeing in, in the education technology space pop up over the next few years. Uh, we'll be addressing how we can provide more effective and efficient learning, um, less effort, more output, um, and again. Everything today is personalized, from your coffee to your suits to anything that you buy online, and yet our education is still a one-size-fits-all. And that model is not working. It's, it's obviously broken. And if you look to where the, the web has gone with social media and how much more uh, adaptive people are to actually using their computers and going online and spending most of their time there, it just makes sense. And it, it makes sense that, you know, when you're sitting and you're concentrating, you can actually, I, I love the adaptive learning style because you can learn based on what fits your needs. Um, in school, you're, there's so much distraction, there's so much else going on out on there that you really, it's like you show up and you think that's enough. And when you, you're, I'm sorry, you might, you might think that this is uh, all technology, all nuts and bolts, and it's not. There's an art and a science to this, and 
you bring up a great point, David, about the social aspect, the community aspect of, of the technology and, and, and what's being done around it. So we will do all of the, the um, I would call it the highbrow tech um, back end uh, uh, work, but, but I think the, the front end stuff, the stuff that, that people will notice um, is, is that we're going to involve experts, whether it be teachers or other students in the community, whether it be in your cl uh, college classroom or around the world, people who really understand the topic. We can tap that, the knowledge of the crowd. David, I'm sure there are people in their living room saying, but what about the personal aspect between a teacher and a student? What about between a mentor and the student? Where, where are we losing that? You, you won't lose that. I, I, I think that's, um, that's something that we're very aware of. Uh, there are, just because you go electronic, just because you're, able to, you're now able to uh, take a class on your iPad or be, or be able to, to do more efficiently and uh, take these classes or learn at your own time in your own environment, doesn't mean that you lose the personal nature of it. In fact, we found that in a lot of our classrooms, people, um, if they were in a live classroom, would be shy to actually raise their hand and ask a question. Uh, they would be embarrassed to ask certain questions, whereas we can give you one-on-one -on -one personal attention, almost per, uh, online tutoring, if you will, uh, and answer your question in real time without having to disrupt the class. David? And I would just say, uh, just to bring one big point here, let's focus on what's so amazing about what we have right now, is information at your fingertips. Um, and that's, you know, Google obviously was the start of clicking some, typing something in and getting an answer, and that's where the revolution is going to happen, where literally you can get information and you can learn so cost effectively and so easily. It's right now I think we're, we're at this revolution there's going to be when in 10 years or maybe less, it's going to not even be a thought like where it's called e-learning. It's just going to be called learning and right. it's going to be online and you're, you're almost going to be like, oh, you actually went to a classroom? That's going to happen when, the, when you're there. And, and I think also the education system, in my mind, I don't understand why it's so expensive. And I think it's just gone up every year, every year, because that's, you know, 20% raise, 20% raise, 20% raise. Why does it have to be so expensive? Once it's online and the, not, and the information's there, do you know MIT, since 2001, have put all their courses, course materials, video, and audio of their courses online for free? For free. That's $189,000 education that you can get for free, but you won't have your certificate that says, you know, a diploma from MIT. And you can do that in a lot of uh, educational institutions have followed suit with iTunes. Uh, you can have iTunes universities, and you can have a lot. Of, so there's so much information out there already, but it's just not. In, you have to know to go there. You have to actually do one or two steps. The point where education is similar to Google, where it's so easy to get all this information and the world knows it. That's when we'll be at this yeah, stage. And, and the infrastructure that you talk about, we we change that dynamic completely. Completely. So uh, we're able to deliver not only the same quality, but, but even better content, even more diverse content, because uh, we're going to be a platform that works with all types of content providers, whether they be the big publishers, middle tier publishers, uh, professors or teachers themselves, will be able to upload their content onto the Newton platform. And that's when it becomes really interesting, because it isn't just about the content. I think uh, the packaging of the content, whether it be a textbook or uh, in traditional learning, has been about control. And what we're really about is powering all sorts of content, whether it be Khan Academy video content, all the way to uh, Pearson or McGraw-Hill content, but then making it more effective. And the power of that adaptivity um, that gives you differentiated instru instruction um, is, is what we, we hope to bring. Dave, I know you deal with professionals, so that's easy. You're giving professional instruction to people who have graduated law school uh, and, and other professions. But what about the, um, the student who requires more, who doesn't, is not a self-starter? So, um, you know, for us right now, we, since we have hundreds or thousands of hours of legal content right now, what we've started to do, and this is another thing that I see in the future that's actually happening now, is tagging video content. It's not done as effectively as it can be and as easily, but if you have an hour course uh, that you do for an attorney, there's probably 15 segments in that course that really can apply to the, the layman or somebody who's not a professional, where they can get something from it and be either inspired to, to want to learn more or to actually get their answer. So the more um, you can t break inf information down to the exact segments and exact parts and then, you know and reuse it in many different areas there you can help people from all different 
from all different uh, educations. We, they, yes, I'm sorry to interrupt. We, we really have a, a very interesting take on this as well. We, we believe, and a lot of experts and, and, and leaders in the field um, believe that you know, education should be fun and engaging and today it, it really for the most part isn't. So whether you infuse game dynamics into the actual experience, um, we talked about the community or social aspects of it, um, it really is the goal of all of us to be able to try to infuse that, that type of engagement into the experience. It's a big part of what we're going to be doing. Um, like, as I said, it's not just about the technology. There is a user interface and a uh, a true engagement factor to what we're going to bring because learning's got to be fun. You got to learn through doing and if you, if you don't do, if you don't participate, if you lose interest, game's over. Well right now uh, uh, a family uh, sends their children off to school, they know where they are, they, they're supervised by a teacher and um, they have a lunch hour, they may have a rest hour if they're young and, and then they go on. Uh, what, what I'm envisioning you're talking about is a student in their own home is sitting before uh, some sort of screen and learning. Is that what we're talking about? Absolutely. Uh, it could be a standalone uh, online course as you're talking about, um, but we are all, it's flexible enough so that it could be an addendum. You know, it could be an add-on to a live course. Uh, so live courses aren't going away. And so these could be effective tools that any teacher could use. Uh, again, it could be a standalone course, self-directed, as you, as you mentioned, or it could be something that uh, could be integrated into any classroom. I only say that because uh, unless the parent is staying over the child and making sure the child doesn't play with other games other than what you would like them to learn about, how do you continue? That's, that's where the bar needs to be set at no, a much I, higher place. And I, I think David mentioned this before. Game dynamics, a lot of these uh, elements that make the learning experience much more interactive and dynamic have to be uh, kind of there by default. Uh, if you don't make it interesting, uh, they're going to be doing Facebook or whatever else. They're and, and I would also say I think it, it, it's going to be a gradual process. You know, first you start, you know, continuing education, professionals, ready. Then you start with people who already graduated college and are looking to learn another trade. You go, then you go to the college level, and the college level certainly there's a lot of room for improvement there. Even law schools in California is the only state where you don't have to be an accredited law school for the individual to take a bar. What, what that means is. Kaplan uh, is one of the first, uh, they, they took over a school, it's a purely online school where you can get your law degree and take the bar and practice law in California. That's going to be the future. what do you think about this game dynamics even for on a professional level? I love it. I mean, I think, uh, I, you know, I was working with, with some professors who are actually building it right now and they had me test it out and it was some hypos in law and you had to choose different things and it's the way to learn. You know, if you're interacting and if you're thinking and challenging yourself it's this and this is nothing different this is Absolutely. for the past since learning started the game and the dynamics and the thinking but now it can be you know so much easier and it can be spread out to so many more people um, so I'm all about get game dynamics I'm all about having the student do um, and I've always said this you know the more you do the more you learn so you, you can engage in something. And also, something I thought of, yes, if your time is freed up a lot more, you know what you have more time to do? Real life internships, and real life things, and working in real companies, trying five different fields, and seeing what it's like. Because there's not enough real experience in there. And it's done now, but not on the right type of level, I, I think. David, right now, uh, e-learning, is it geared to all segments? Um, are you gearing it to the professional? Are you gearing it to the pre-K? What are we doing? Great question. Uh, we have started, as I mentioned, in test prep uh, with our GMAT, SAT, and LSAT classes. Well, uh, now we're talking about now, graduate students, and graduate now, school. Sure, no? yeah. And Highly we're, educated people. We're moving through, so we're, we're going to we're focusing on on uh, obviously college uh, students uh, with what we're bringing out next year, but then also K through 12. Um, there are huge opportunities in both spaces. As I mentioned before, there is just a gap right now when we send a bunch of kids to college, but a bunch of them are not prepared for college. And so it starts way before 12th grade, uh, and that's where we're going to address that. But the fundamentals of our adaptive learning platform and what we're building uh, will help anyone learn anything. I don't care if you're in a vocational school learning how to become an auto mechanic or if you are learning uh, basic math in a Kuhnman studio, or if you are Can I uh, learn learning physics, which I know nothing about, which is probably one of the most difficult subjects to learn? Sure, absolutely. What's you can the, make that easy uh, for me to learn? Absolutely. Let, let me say this. I took the bar exam. You know how I learned it? 
it, I watched, you know, it was a very expensive course. I went to a school, and what did they do? They put a video up the entire time uh, for the training. Literally, the entire class was eight weeks or whatever it was, and all video, and that got me to pass the bar exam. Uh, I was in a room with other students, but that is what, so you forgot after the end, it wasn't a, a live person. So what does a live person really add value for? But the, the thing is, I have, I'm very, I'm not against, obviously I think we're not replacing in-person learning, and we do a lot of live webcasting, and there's a lot of good interactivity mm -hmm. when you have someone talking and you're, like you said, there can be more people who participate when you're in your home versus in a classroom of 100 people. Um, so there, there's a lot of positives to, to learning. The, the main thing also is why do people want to learn? So, you know, especially once you pass the pre, you know, go to college or to high school, you should be learning because you want to lead to positive change. You want to add value. If you're not learning, you're, you're not adding more things. Go We're going to go to break now. We'll continue with this Already? conversation and find out what the future is going to hold for us right after this break. You're watching them all line. I'm Alan Schnellman, your host. Stay with us. I feel my job is extremely important in knowing that you've helped people out on the ground, the firefighters in particular. Just the fact that they see us up there making an effort gives them a lot of comfort. In my civilian job, I fly people from point A to point B, but in the Air Force Reserve, I get to save lives. I'm Major Mark Stewart, and very proud to be a member of the Air Force Reserve. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. Hello, you're watching Lawline. Today's topic is the future of education. If you have a student, if you are a student, if you want to learn, find out how you're going to learn today and in the future. Our guests are David Liu from Newton, um, an educational learning station, and David Schnorman, president of Lawline.com. It seems like technology is advancing faster than I've ever seen it before. Is, is that your feeling, David? Uh, Moore's Law. Um, it's just how, I don't know, if Moore's Law is how things are going to keep advancing, advancing, advancing um, every year. I, I don't know the statistics, but there's a point where um, if you look at the internet right now, you look at some of the new companies that come out, Facebook, um, Twitter, how fast they've come to 500 million users or 100 million users, where you started when uh, Dave was at AOL and you look at back 10 years ago, to get to 10 million users took three years. Now to get to 10 million users can take six months, three months. So everything, not only technology, is moving faster and faster, and that's why we're seeing all these changes in, in learning. I just read about a coupon company that has over 30 million users. registered mm -hmm. users and has not done one advertisement. You're talking about Groupon. I'm talking about Groupon. Yeah, yeah. No, the, it's uh, and there's a there's a social element to that business, uh, which is going to be around uh, for a lot of these. Uh, businesses that we're talking about in the education space. But in terms of the advancement of technology, as you, as you mentioned, uh, we're seeing it come faster than we had thought. You know, we uh, built this test prep business and it's, uh, it's doing well, um, but now publishers and universities and uh, all, all sorts of institutions now are coming to us and saying, hey, we'd love to have this differentiated uh, learning experience, this, this adaptive learning experience. Is there a way that you can power our content? Is there, is there a way that we can, you can power our courses and, and help us be able to deepen the engagement and fundamentally change the pain point? Uh, right now, their pain point is uh, graduation rates are lower than, than they should be. Dropout rate is higher than it should be. Cost a, a university $5,500 every time somebody drops out. Uh, and then, of course, we've, we've got this gap coming from the kids coming from high school to uh, universities. We haven't even talked about all the corporate applications for this. So really, it's anybody who really wants to have subject level mastery of anything uh, should be able to do it faster, cheaper, uh, and at a better level of mastery. And that's, uh, that, that's really where this is all going. N knowledge is power, and this is the information age. And um, learning is something that is going to be, like you said, on the corporate level, it should be done a lot more and a lot more efficiently than it is now. And 
it's just there's so much educational institutions in there. Even look what's happening with books to Kindles to iPads to you know what you know to to where you're taking the paper and putting it online. Um, there's so many different areas. Google, for example, they're going to be launching their bookstore or whatever it is. They took seven million books and put it online and they've archived it. Um, there will be a point where there is no paper, you know, and it's all going to be online, and that's just, just a matter of time. Yeah. And it's going to be sooner than we think, it, yep. in, in my opinion. And this is, we're talking about an industry, uh, this is the last behemoth industry. We, you know, we've, we've been through media and search and um, commerce, and, but now when you look at education, this is, this is a multi-trillion dollar industry. It's so big, it's, it's even hard to get your head wrapped around how big it is. And so it's, it is on the precipice of being uh, completely uh, revolutionized. And uh, again, Newton will be one of those companies. There will be many others. Uh, I love what you're doing in the space. And it's, it's just a, um, it's an exciting time. So you're saying that your software can be adopted to any educational experience? Yes, we're, so we're la launching a platform uh, <coughs> uh, very shortly that will, uh, and we're gonna make it open to everybody. Uh, so developers, um, companies, institutions, foundations will be able to adopt our technology to power their content or uh, content that we use. Dave, do you, do you actually envision that eventually professional schools will be taught all on the internet? And there's no question. Um, I mean, schools right now are, are looking at ways to doing that. It's, it's a matter of us changing the, the mindset. And if you look in California, you don't have to be an accredited university to pass the bar. So why, just like it's happening with us, when we first started four years ago doing the online programs, there's only a handful of states that let you do it online. Now we're in 40 states, and that's just where things are going. So if you don't bring it to where this, the new generation, they only know online. They, they didn't know a time before there were cell phones. They didn't know a time before there was internet, believe it or not, what, the new generation. I'm still amazed about a fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, you're, if you don't teach in that way, somebody else will, Newton will, Lawline will, and people will go somewhere else. and. So you, you, the established institutions will go there, and they'll do a good job at it. But you and, know, and, and the point's right. And uh, we're, again, we're going to be partnering with these learning institutions and and publishers. A good example um, of uh, what's happening in the space is that more and more of these universities, uh, leading universities, these are not for-profit universities, right? And we we know a lot about those online for-profit universities. Um, we're talking about not not-for-profit state universities, large schools. They want to bring more students online. Why? Because they should. They want to be able to distribute uh, their top level edu education to as many folks as possible. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to go to an Arizona State University, get a math course from MIT, get a, uh, a, geog a geology class from another university. The economics will work. The model just has not been built yet. And so, of course, the economics will work. There's right? no cost once you have the That's product. Right. It's intellectual right. property. So it. The economics is there, it's just it's Absolutely. just getting everyone to catch up. Let's see if I understand this. Right now I know bookstores, physical bookstores are being very stressed regarding sales because everybody's going to the Kindle, to the Nook, and uh, people aren't buying physical books the way they used to. And bookstores are closing. <clears throat> are you predicting or saying that our institutions, the thousands of universities and colleges, the tens of thousands of schools in the near future are going to be a thing of the past? No, 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 no. They're just going it's, to, it's just a different way of distributing and of, of doing what they do. They are experts in teaching, and, th and that is what they do very, very well. Uh, what, what we're saying is the method of distribution, the platform by which you teach, will evolve. And there will be hybrid models. Uh, the live classroom, as I said, I don't think will go away anytime soon. But as David and I are here telling you, we think that the proliferation of the online classroom and being able to do things on a much more uh, self-guided uh, way with technology and with user experience with these products um, is not only gaining momentum, but it's, it's certainly uh, funding a lot of these other uh, companies. Dave, do you see a merger of the two of live and online or something else well you know it's just you know what's the goal you know I, I, I definitely see a clearly a merger but you know, have to ask what's the goal of education you know why do people go to college why do people go to high school and I, I almost feel like part of one of the main issues is it's not that it's a brick-and-mortar thing 
it's that it's the wrong type of things that are being taught. We're not taught about money. We're not taught about business. We're not taught about things that we want. We're taught about this old curriculum. And I think one thing that's going to happen when you can go online, people can learn and students can learn what they want to learn and get the education that they need. So I think that's a big part of what you mentioned before. They control it. Sure. Now the user will control it. And that's what the web has done. And that's and if you try to fight, it's too, you can't fight that. So if And the other thing is the cost. I think the cost is astronomically too high. I mean, you know, every, there's eight, what, $800 billion. And, and access. Uh, it, it is, it's bordering on criminal that, that the majority of people, not only in this country, but around the world, don't have access and equal access to quality of the content, the education, and the teaching. Um, that all is going to be transformed. And just, just, just in terms of bordering on criminal or whatever, the one thing that you, you know, everyone, most people are on student loans. The one thing if you go bankrupt that you can't let go of is your student loan. So that's one thing that people are paying off for the rest of their lives. They're paying off the banks these student loans that are hundreds of thousands of dollars at some point. So why can't it be a much more cost effective way to learn and that's to make it online where people can actually learn what they want. And it should be. And that's, MIT does it for free right now and there's a lot of people that do it. David, if there was a crystal ball on the table. Everybody wants to know what the future has to store. I'd be playing the lottery. Where are we going to be in five years and ten years, in your opinion? In what, in what aspect? In education. Well, I think if we have anything to do with it in, in five or ten years, uh, we will be enabling publishers, institutions, people who deliver teaching and content um, at a much higher quality level at a much more personalized level to the individual, uh, where learning is the objective, not memorizing and, uh, and passing a test. Dave, where's lowline.com going to be in five or 10 well, years? You know, it's funny because you know, we, we built uh, our own e-learning platform, and we love what we do. And of course, our plans are bigger as Quickly. well. Uh, we're going to be, you know, our goal is to provide education. You know, we want to create a positive learning experience uh, for anybody who wants to you know, go online and learn. David Liu, David Schnorman, thank you both for being on Lawline. And as thank always, you. this is Alan Schnorman, and thank you for watching Lawline. You have been watching Lawline with your host, New York trial attorney, Alan Schnorman. Mr. Schnorman will be back with you next week at the same time. If you have any questions about this week's program, please write to Lawline, 